Hello there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be learning about a tool called Selective Color, which is great for correcting bad looking color casts or any unwanted hues that you get in shots, especially, especially in portraits. So this is not really a tool which is too great for, let's say, you know, just changing the color of a particular object as such, but to remove these unwanted color casts, it's a great tool. Okay, and we had seen this image before, remember, in the hue saturation adjustment function where we had determined with the help of this histogram, which we had accessed by going to window and histogram, that yes, certainly in the middle regions, in the middle tones, we had this yellow creeping in, which was just giving this a bad looking hue. And we tried to correct at that time, we were able to be moderately successful because we basically turn down the saturation of the yellows through the hue saturation adjustment function, but that was not too desirable because yellow also might be required in certain of the pixels, right? We don't just want to turn down the saturation. It's a better idea to just mix yellow with some other colors which can neutralize yellow, but we still maintain the vibrancy. And that is what this tool will allow us to do. This tool is actually based on a completely different color model. We're going to talk about that not in too much detail, but you're gonna just see that when I open up this tool. So this tool is located right here in this adjustment function menu. It's at the bottom, so we select selective color. And if you see, on the first glance, it kind of looks similar to the hue saturation tool that we have been seeing, right? You get this drop down menu where the different colors are, you get some sliders. Well, that's about it. That's where the similarity ends because this tool is actually very different. This is based on a color model called as CMYK, okay? Now the reason they call it K and not B, even though it's black here, is probably because they don't want to confuse B with blue, which is the abbreviation of another very important or a, a popular color model called the RGB color model, okay? And the reason they use K uh, for black is because black is also called as the key color in this color model. And there's, there are a host of reasons for that, okay, we literally will have to go into the world of printing photos to understand that, but we really don't want to understand that too much, okay? So just think of it like this, black has another name called key or key color, and therefore it's called CMYK model. It's not too important anyway. Now here's the thing, just we'll have to look at the diagram of this model in order to just to understand, not the physics behind of how this color model works, but just to understand what should happen when we start moving these sliders, because ultimately you will have to move these sliders to correct the problem. So here's how the whole process starts here, okay? The, in the first, you can ignore the preset of the first option, you don't have to worry about this, it all starts from here. So the first thing in this drop down menu that you see under colors, you have to select that problem color, which is yellow. We've already determined that, so this is pretty easy to understand. Now is the time these four sliders come into play, okay? So what should we do with these sliders? Now I have, either before this lecture or after this lecture, you would have got your hands on these two diagrams, okay? So one is the CMYK diagram and the RGB color diagram, okay? So like I said, in RGB, you can see red, green, and blue are the primary colors, and this is an additive color model. That means you add colors to go from black to white, but you don't have to understand. CMYK is, and it's a subtractive color model where you go from white to black by subtracting colors. Again, you don't have to understand, but what you do have to understand is this. First of all, can you see here, when any of the primary colors mix, you're getting the secondary colors, which are yellow, cyan, and magenta. In the CMYK models, these secondary colors are the primary colors. So cyan, yellow, magenta, okay? And when they kind of, you can think of it like this, when they interact, you're getting actually the, the secondary colors here are the primary colors of the RGB model, blue, red, and green. Again, that is also not too important. Then you ask me, Christian, why are you talking so much about this? And why have you given us these diagrams? Because this diagram will help you understand what movement of the slider should you be making for each of those colors in that tool to neutralize the problem color. And here's how it's gonna work. So if you go back to Photoshop, you selected this, now what should we do with cyan? That is the question, because we want to neutralize this bad looking yellow, right? So let's go back to our diagram and try to understand. 
We are on the science slider. That's the first slider. The problem color is yellow. So one thing we can now straight away come to know is whatever we do, we are talking about yellow and cyan interacting since we are on the first slider, right? So that is pretty easy to understand. So now let's start looking at the diagram to understand what will happen. If I increase the cyan slider, that means go towards the positive side, the right side on that slider, what we are basically doing is, think of it like this, that they are mixing with each other. That means we're adding more cyan to the pixels that are yellow, right? And what happens when they mix? They start to form a green color, right? Let's actually see that happen. So if I increase the cyan slider, the problem color we have selected yellow, these two colors are interacting. And according to the diagram, if I do this, we should start to neutralize yellow and move towards green. And you see, it's just taking that yellow in such a beautiful way. We're not losing saturation this time, but just see. Isn't that absolutely amazing? And you may not see the green appear too much because in this case, the strongest part of the yellow pixels was actually right here, okay? In this area, and in this area, you can see it slightly turning towards green, so just see. Just very slightly, right? So now I know that yes, this is gonna work for me, but let's also try to understand from the diagram What's going to happen if I move this slider towards the left side, okay? Now this can be a bit tricky to understand uh, because this was kind of easy, right? We saw the green color here and these two were mixing. Now I'll tell you an easy way to understand this. In this diagram, what do you see opposite to cyan? That is red, okay? Because cyan and red are complementary colors. So even if, remember when we saw the color wheel, if you look at the color wheel, you'll find that cyan is directly opposite to red. So these are complementary colors. Now, don't again go into the science of things. Just, just keep this diagram with you and just think of it like this. When you reduce cyan now, okay, it's gonna start adding more of red to that yellow pixels that are there, okay? Because it's the opposite color or the complementary color of cyan will start to be added because there's no cyan, so then it works like this, the opposite color then starts to get added to those pixels. So when you add red, right? Red is gonna start getting added to the yellow pixels. What kind of a color can you expect? It'll be something like reddish, orangish, something in that range, right? So let's see if that happens. So if I turn down cyan, can you see? Again, it's kind of becoming reddish, orangish, right? So again, we don't have to understand why, what is the science behind it, what is exactly the complementary color, no. Just remember that diagram, okay? So that you know how to neutralize a certain color. So in this case, now you know, if the problem is yellows, which side should we be moving? Which side worked well for us? Well, this worked better for us. Because we don't wanna unnecessarily add that reddish look, right? This neutralizes yellow in a better way because sometimes doing the opposite can happen. So you should just know what to do, okay? Now let's go on to the next slider. Now things will be easier for us to understand that should we even be moving this slider at all or not, okay? So this is, this time the second slider is magenta. How is this interacting with yellow? When we add, it's gonna form red. When we take this towards the other side, what is the complementary color? Green. So let's see this. If we, this side, hopefully this image should become, start to become red. Can you see? Kind of adding becoming more reddish. What was the other side? Green. So if you go towards the minus side, it becomes green. So now you can ask yourself, okay, so here's how things are gonna work. You can, when you move slider to slider, right? You can ask yourself, is this looking good? Do I need to add something to it? So what, what can I do? I look at the diagram and I say, okay, you know what? I just feel this image has just, it just needs a bit of reds back, uh, to just kind of give it a bit of vibrancy. Then I say, no problem, maybe a bit of it, I can add like this, just very tiny, right? Then we go on to the next slider. Now in this case, this is the same color, right? That we've selected, yellows and yellow. And this is gonna basically, this is very easy to understand. If we just increase this, it's gonna basically make the yellows more saturated because we're simply adding more yellows to yellows. So let's see this. So if we do this, it's just gonna make it more saturated, right? This is pretty easy to understand. 
And what will happen when we start to decrease the yellow slider? Well, again, let's look at the diagram. So what is the complementary of yellow? It's blue, which is again kind of made by cyan and magenta. So just see, if we start to decrease this, you're going to start to notice cyan magenta. It's going to basically start to turn towards something which is bluish, uh, magenta-ish in nature. So if I decrease the yellows, I could kind of, yes, desaturate it, but can you see we still kind of get those magentas and the reds still there, okay? So it may not just completely turn blue, okay? It completely depends on image to image, but basically now you know that, yes, you know, blue is kind of now the main hue here, which is again forming from cyan and magenta. So we're kind of seeing, you know, those colors right here. So it may not exactly turn blue, okay? There are a lot of uh, calculations involved in that, but looking at this diagram, we can come to know that yes, yellow is definitely not there. Cyan and magenta now are dominating because if we see this, you know, what is outside yellow? It is cyan and magenta, okay? So you can think of it like this also. So again, maybe I can use a bit of this just to decrease the saturation just a bit, okay? Like this, I don't mind that. And finally, the last slider, which is black, is basically going to help you again do the same thing. It's going to either, because black itself has no uh, saturation, right? So when you move this, it's going to basically control the how dark or light this yellow becomes. So those yellow pixels, you can make them darker or brighter. So if I wanted, for example, to add more blacks, it's just going to kind of increase the contrast, basically, in those pixels. You see? or it's gonna make it lighter, so it's completely up to you. But this will not produce any color shift as such, we're just making it lighter or darker. So it's okay, if, I'm, if, I was, if I was happy with the contrast of these pixels, that's fine, I can just leave it like this. But now, if we see the before and after, you see, this is what we started off with, and this is what we stopped at. Can you see? Just by a movement of few sliders, we have been able to correct this particular thing. One final thing, you have this relative and absolute. You really don't have to worry about this. We hardly ever use the absolute. Absolute, just think of it like this. If I was to select absolute, the whole concept remains the same. It's just that it's going to be a much stronger change, which we usually don't want. With relative, things are more subtle and things, the, the colors just mix together very well because absolute, you're basically saying that, you know, if I'm increasing this by 60%, then actually add 60%, no. But in relative, is actually gonna see how much of the original color was a percentage of the other colors, and then it'll add 60% to that percentage. So the uh, effect will be lesser, but you don't really have to worry about this. Usually, we mostly use relative because it just produces more natural and subtle looking results. That's what you have to understand. But this definitely is a tool that should be handy that should come in handy, especially if you are into color correcting and shooting portraits. So I hope that you like the use of this tool. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.